The insane politics, the exorbitant cost of living, the wild violence on the streets, the low quality of food, the poor education system. There are a lot of reasons you might want to leave the United States, but if you grow up under the conglomeration of those factors, it might be a little difficult to know where to go or how to even get there. So in this video, we're talking about how you can leave the United States. Let's start with my Leave the United States starter pack. There's some things you're gonna need and some ideas that you need to digest in order to get out of this country. So let's get right into it. If you're gonna leave America and you're setting up your starter pack, the first thing you should fill it with is an emergency fund. Now you shouldn't actually stuff this into a backpack, go put it into a bank account, but you should have some money that's enough to number one, keep you safe wherever you're going. So if you take a big financial hit or you, you know your income stops or you don't get a job wherever you're going, something like that, you have a little bit of money to keep you going. But also you wanna have some cash in the bank just in case you decide, you know what, this travel life isn't for me. It's really difficult living in another country. I wanna go back home. You're gonna have a little bit of cash in the bank to get you home safely and get you reoriented. And if you're wondering exactly how much money should you have in your emergency fund, well, I've made another video about that. I'll link it up in the cards right there. You can check it out after this video. The next thing you're gonna need to leave the United States is your passport. Now, you don't need your passport to go to every single country. There are some places you can go just on a passport card. You don't need the real book, but I recommend you get the passport book. And to do so, you're gonna need to collect a bunch of documents. You're gonna have to pay some fees. You may have to set up an appointment, and then you're gonna have to wait for your passport up to 11 weeks and pay at least about $165. Now, there is a way to speed up that process, but it may change how much it costs, etc. And I've made another video about that as well. I'll put it in the cards. Make sure to check that out after this video. Another thing I recommend that you carry with you just in case you need it in another country is all of your most important documents. So you're gonna want copies of them and you're gonna wanna get them apostilled or certified by the relevant agency. So this could include uh, your passport getting copied and apostilled. You could get your bank statements, uh, any criminal records that you might need or something that shows that you have no criminal record. Uh, your marriage and divorce records, any kind of school records for you or your children, any birth certificates, things like that. Have records of all of that and make sure they are registered and apostled and stamped by the relevant agency because you may need them in another country and it's gonna be a lot more difficult to get it mailed to you or done while you're there as opposed to just getting it done before you leave. That's why you put it in your starter pack. An important piece of electronics that you should have in your starter pack is a phone that can be used anywhere. So you wanna have an unlocked phone that has a dual SIM card. Now, just because it's unlocked doesn't mean it's going to be able to be used in every single country around the world because different countries use different bands for their SIM cards. But if you get a dual SIM card unlocked phone in the United States, generally speaking, it's gonna work in most countries. So you could pick one up on Amazon or eBay, but make sure you just get the dual SIM because because you never know if say you're down in Mexico, you might wanna have two SIM cards there in case you don't get service very well with another one and you wanna have like a, a, just a backup SIM card. They're really cheap there, just a couple dollars to get the card and then you know $10 a month to get service on them, a few gigs of data and things like that. Or what you might wanna do is keep a SIM card from the United States that has like an international plan on it so you can use that while you're traveling and then you can get that backup dual SIM when you arrive in your destination. Now that's not the only way you can use your phone across the world, you don't just have to have that dual SIM. There's other things you can use like Google Voice, you can link a phone number to that and have people call you anywhere to your Google Voice number. You can also use an app that I like to use called Text Now. Uh, this is really good for when you have to um, use those codes that they send you to your SMS text, they'll say, you know, we need to text you a code and then you have to enter the code. Well, there's some app services that won't accept those codes, but TextNow will if you pay for the premium plan. It's only $5 a month. It's really easy. This isn't sponsored or anything. I don't get any kickbacks from them. It's just what I do personally. And sorry, did I say $5 a month? It's $5 a year. So it's really super cheap and you get to keep that number with you. And it does work with most SMS codes. Something that's really important to have in your starter pack before leaving the United States is either some credit cards or debit cards that work really well internationally. So I really recommend having a debit card that has no foreign transaction fees and doesn't charge you for outside ATM withdrawal fees. You wanna be able to use this in any country around the world without getting charged 
just for using it because, oh, sorry, I kicked my camera. You're gonna get charged a little bit on the conversion rate every time that you uh, withdraw some money in the local currency. So you will lose a little bit there and that will depend on your bank. So make sure you look for a good bank with that. But you also don't wanna lose that foreign transaction fee. So avoid any debit cards that have that. If you're gonna go for credit cards, I really try to look for things that don't have any annual fees because I don't like those. And I look for something that gives me points back either in the form of cash back or in the form of travel rewards. Now I do have some credit cards that I can recommend to you. I'll link them down in the description box. You'll get some money for that. I'll get some money for that. Let's get some money together if you're really looking for a good card because I use it myself. Something that I've really had to learn over time that is really important for leaving the United States is trying to leave with as little as possible. So not only do I recommend trying to get rid of as much stuff as you can so you don't have to fill a storage unit and pay that every single month, but it also helps you move around the world. If you have a whole bunch of luggage and you're trying to get between flights and try to move around like that on uneven sidewalks, like it just gets really uncomfortable. So what I've found after about 10 years of traveling is that I prefer to have carry on only luggage and I can recommend a few bags by Osprey. Again, I'll link those down in the description box. Those are affiliate links, but they're really good bags and they're nice and sturdy and they have a lot of space inside them and they'll be carry on only. And what I really like about that is not only is it quicker, you can get on your flight quicker, you can get off your flight quicker, you don't have to wait for your baggage, but it saves you money too because now pretty much every airline is going to charge you for checking in a big piece of luggage. You can save yourself, you know, a hundred, maybe two hundred dollars every every time you get on a flight because you don't have to do that. And the last thing that I recommend that you have in your starter pack before leaving the United States is some travel insurance. Now, this is because number one, your insurance in the United States isn't going to function outside of the United States. And number two, this will protect you in case there's any kind of like travel delays, interruptions, lost baggage, um, if you need like medical evac and stuff like that. So um, I really recommend this. I've used a couple different companies. World Nomads cost about a hundred bucks a month for one person. I think it was about 150 for me and my daughter. Uh, but then I dropped down to a cheaper plan that I found through Travelex. That was more like $15 a month, so a really great bargain. And they've both worked out fine for me. Once you have all of that, your starter pack is ready to go. But then you have to pick where you're actually going to go. And that's going to be highly subjective. But here are some things to think about regardless of wherever you're going. Number one is that you might have to get a visa to get into the country to where you're going. Now, there are lots of places that will let you stay without any kind of visa, but it's only going to be for a limited time. So for example, most Americans can get into Mexico for up to 180 days on a, just like a tourist stamp. And you can just go explore the country pretty f freely and get an idea for what it feels like to live there, etc. And six months is quite a long time. Other countries give you three months or just one month. It really depends on where you're going. So make sure you're looking into that. Do you need a visa to where, wherever you're going? Because you might need it before you actually get there. It'd be terrible, you know, to end up at a country and then try to get into customs and they ask you, well, where's your tourist visa? And you didn't get one. Now there are some places that will let you in without one, like I mentioned, but just be careful. You know for sure wherever you're going. Now, if you're leaving the United States, you could possibly end up in another country that costs just as much or even more to live than here. Say if you go from rural Iowa to a big city, Sweden, you're probably going to see an increase in your prices. Now, I would actually recommend that you go try to find some place that costs less than the United States and most places around the world do, but I wanna give you a few quick recommendations. Number one is Mexico. It's just south of our border. It's really easy to get there. You can literally walk there from some locations, but flights from any major city are pretty quick to Mexico and they're pretty cheap as well. And also, you know, if you are missing family, it's really easy to fly back to the United States and go see them. So it's a great place to live to still stay close to the United States, but experience a much different culture at a much lower cost of living as well. If you wanna head a little further away, you could go to South America. I love Colombia, it's a great place to live. I lived in Medellin for six months, it's a beautiful city. I lived in Valle du Par for a month, it's a little bit smaller smaller, more rural, you know, it's a really diverse country. It's got huge wide mountains. It's got 
uh, beaches on both the Atlantic and the Pacific. It's got deserts, it's got the Amazon jungle. There's a lot to check out there. Now, while it's a little bit further to fly away, it can still be pretty quick, you know, six to eight hours from the United States. And it's a, got a lower cost of living, in my opinion, than Mexico. And I've made videos about that stuff before. I'll link them in the cards so you can check them out after this if you're curious. But I could also recommend Thailand in Southeast Asia for a really, really low cost of living in a beautiful country with delicious food and an awesome culture and some of the most fun festivals that you can experience. Another thing to consider when living outside the United States is if you can speak the language or not. Now, there are a lot of places where they speak English as a native language, of course, the UK, Australia, etc. But there are tons of countries around the world where English is a secondary language. So while you don't necessarily need the local language to live in another country, I would highly recommend that you try and learn it. You could try and pick it up before you get there, but really in my experience, the best way to learn a new language is to go live it and just practice it every day. I'd recommend getting a tutor if you can. They're usually relatively cheap. You could even just do a few hours a week. You could look for proper classes wherever you go to. That's something you can do in Thailand to get an extended visa. You could look into their ED education visa. You can stay up to a year there just learning the Thai language in one of their institutions. So I do recommend doing that kind of stuff because if you know the local language, you will actually be able to save a lot of money as well. For example, you can barter on rent. You're going to actually be able to understand people when you're shopping at a market and you're just going to get better prices overall. And and fewer people are going to be able to gringo tax you or rip you off when you're traveling. So definitely try to learn the local language, but you don't need it. English is widely spoken throughout the world. When selecting where to live, I really think you should consider the climate that you are going to be moving into. I mean, there are days when I was living in Mexico where I would have to take three showers a day just because we were sweating so much walking around and things like that. So if you're not used to that kind of scenario, either you want to you know, plan for that, have a place that has really nice air conditioning and good water pressure to keep yourself clean, or you might want to consider finding somewhere else to live. And more on that, just be aware that if you are coming from the United States and you didn't grow up in another region, there's going to be all kinds of climate factors in that place that you are not aware of. So make sure you get to know what the real ecological dangers are of that region because if you didn't grow up around it, you don't realize how ingrained it gets into you when you do. So make sure you go learn and beyond that, make sure you learn the dangerous animals as well. You know, if there's any snakes or spiders or scorpions, make sure you at least know the most dangerous ones so you don't just randomly uh, get yourself killed. So something that's really important but you might not have thought about when leaving America and moving to another country is how is that country going to accept you. Now, if you're going to a place like Mexico, they're going to be very accepting because we have a really close tie with them. There's a lot of Americans in Mexico, a lot of Mexicans in America. There's a lot of exchange like that. So it's really easy to get accepted into that culture. But there are some other further flung cultures that might not know so much about the United States and that you might find yourself kind of like the oddball out there. Now, I wouldn't say to shy away from that. I think you can find a lot of growth in that sort of opportunity. So something I'm sure that you've thought about before leaving the United States and going to another country is what are you going to do for healthcare? Especially if you already have your doctor or if you have any specialists or anything like that that you work with, you might be a little bit concerned about leaving that behind and trying to reestablish something in another country. And I don't blame you, your health is very important. But I also want to reassure you that I believe you will be able to find what you need in most countries in a majority of circumstances. Now, I say that because you could go to Thailand, for example, and you could live in Bangkok and you'll find that there they have really first rate hospitals. They could do any kind of surgery that you need. They have all kinds of specialists that you could find. Now, while that is possible, say in the capital city in that country, maybe living in a further flung location, like in the north somewhere, or, uh, outside of the big cities, it might be a little bit more difficult. Okay, let's move along and talk about how you're going to sustain yourself when you're in a new country because you don't want to become a burden on their system, of course, and you want to be able to take care of yourself. So let's talk about how we can sustain ourselves. And the first way is actually to just work abroad and work in the country that you move into. Now, there are some things that might stop you from doing that. For example, you might not know the 
local language and that's going to make it a lot harder to get a job you might not have a work visa so you might you know have to consider working illegally and i don't really recommend that uh, you might have to work in a job that has really low pay compared to what you get in the United States. And so there's a lot of things that might prevent you from doing this, but in the case of the latter, the lo really low pay, often that coincides with a much lower cost of living. So just be aware of that. And if you can get past those barriers, that is, you know, get past the language barriers, get your work visa and work there legally, and also accept the pay that they offer in that country, well, then there is a way to work wherever you are going to. But that's not the only way that you can make money in another country. You can also invest there if you want. And investing can many times get you a visa into that country. For example, you could go down to Colombia and you could buy a piece of property for about $108,000 right now, and that will give you a visa to stay in that country as a resident as well. So there are options for that, but if you wanna take your investment and put it into a business, that's something you could do and you could start making money there. So for example, there was a, another channel that used to run on YouTube called How to, Ex How to Expat. And what they did was they taught people how to move to Colombia. And they had actually moved there themselves. They got this investment visa for about, I think, $27,000 that you invest into a business. And then they started making money by helping people move down to Colombia as well. So I thought that was very interesting. And as for the real estate option, you could either use it as your personal home or that's something you could use as like an Airbnb. And again, Mexico is another place that's really good for that because Americans can go to Mexico on a tourist visa. You can buy a piece of property and you can start making money on it almost immediately. So that's always an option for you as well. If you are a highly skilled worker, that is you have like some really fancy degree or you have some job that's in high demand in another country, you may be able to get a visa there just because you have those skills needed. So make sure you look into that. If you have a really specialized degree or a really specialized job, look into getting another job in another country through one of their work programs that are trying to entice you in. On the other hand, something that isn't highly specialized and is something almost any American can do in another country is go and teach English abroad. Now, there are many countries that are going to require that you have like a degree, not necessarily a teaching degree. I taught with just a science degree. I was a bio major, yet I got a math and English teaching job in Hong Kong. I also taught kindergarten in Colombia for a while. So it just shows that you don't actually need like the teaching degree. As long as you are fairly articulate and you present yourself well and you speak native English, there are some places in the world that you can get a teaching job without a degree. You could just have a high school education or a GED, something like that. As long as you show up for work, those places need you. So for example, in Thailand, you might be able to get into like a small school just because they don't have many people there who are even qualified as a teacher to teach. So they might be willing to take you into like a private institution. Again, the pay might be pretty low, but it would be a way to sustain yourself in another country, get a work visa and have enough money to live there. And if it's something you might consider but you think you won't be a very good English teacher, just consider getting like a TEFL or a TESOL and you could do that online for a couple hundred dollars and it would teach you a lot about how to actually work with people who are English second language learners. If you're super adventuresome, you could always get a job in the adventure industry. I know when I was down in Mexico, I met some expats who were you know, running their own adventure program. So depending on their location, they would take people on tours and things like that. But you could also get into something like becoming a scuba diving instructor or a free diving instructor, something like that. Like let's say for example, you took my advice and moved to Thailand, you could become an instructor for us I think it's about maybe $3,000 overall, or at least you could get your dive master and you could stay there long enough and you could start making money just off of diving, you know, then after six months, maybe you could start going for your instructor level and make a little bit more money as well. So just consider doing something like that. If you get certified in some type of skill, you could become an instructor in it and you could start making money in other countries and allowing yourself to travel and live in other places. And lastly, I would encourage you to actually go and look for local jobs. You could walk around and just look for signs. Sometimes there's places that say like, 
English speakers needed, something like that. It's not common, but you could find it. Uh, I would also join some Facebook groups because there's always businesses posting online. Um, for example, I was offered like a, a management position at some boutique hotel in Thailand that I was looking into. I didn't ultimately take it, but it's just the type of an example of a job you could find just because you have your eyes open and you're looking around while you're in the country. Also, don't be afraid to just talk to locals and talk to other expats once you actually get to your destination and ask them, hey, is there any work here? or if they're working, ask them how they got into it, and they could explain a little bit more about the specifics of that destination. Now, I know a lot of you wanna work online, and I don't blame you because I like working online, and I've made a bunch of other videos. I'll link a playlist up here and in the cards you can watch after this about more about this, but let's talk about just a few ways real quick that you could get started working online and living in another country after you leave the United States. So we already talked about teaching English to foreigners, but why not consider doing it online? There's lots of companies that do it for up to about $22 an hour. That's not too bad, especially if you're living in a country that only costs you know $1,000 a month total to live in, including food, rent, transportation, healthcare, et cetera. I also highly recommend learning how to freelance or become a freelancer in some skill that you have or developing a skill to become a freelancer like writing, photography, video editing, uh, virtual assistantships. Uh, there's all kinds of things you can do online. You can check out websites like Upwork, People Per Hour, Fiverr.com, and I know these places get a lot of hate because there's some jobs in there that don't pay a lot, but I'm telling you, if you focus on these platforms like you do on social media, and you're on them every day, and you're working for it, and you're pushing for it, and you're trying to get five-star reviews, and you're getting you know a lot of good reviews from the actual clients and feedback from them on your portfolios, well, you are going to succeed, and you can make a lot of money. It's how I broke free on Upwork.com. I think you can do it too. Just stay focused, and don't listen to the people who tell you that that those websites are scams or whatever. You know, you just gotta be willing to work hard and start from zero on a platform that you've never been on before. Uh, so understand the difficulties in that, but also I highly recommend it because you can finally control your own schedule and make pretty good money as well. And just a few more quick ideas on how you can work online. You could be like a health and a fitness coach. You can make logos for people. You can make book designs for people. You could design websites for people. There's all kinds of way to make money online. So please uh, watch my playlist on making money online in the cards linked up after this video. And please go look for yourself as well because there's lots of ideas out there that probably I can't even think of that would be better suited to you than just the ideas that I come up with that you know kind of pique my interest. And lastly, to get started making a little bit more money online, I would say why not focus on the social media platforms that actually give their creators cash to make content. So like YouTube will pay you to make videos, TikTok will pay you to make videos. Consider doing stuff like that. And while it's not a lot of money in ad revenue starting out or until you have like a really big channel, you know, I have no idea. My channel is small. I have what? 4,000 some subscribers right now. And so um, I'm sure people who have hundreds of thousands actually make a lot of money on these channels, but it's a little bit, it's a way to bring in a little bit of money. And if you really want to start a business, this is another thing that you should get into because say you start an online business, why not start a YouTube channel talking about it to generate more traffic to your business as well while making money on the platform. Here's my playlist about making money online. Here's a playlist about moving to another country. And if you like this video, give it a like and let me know down in the comments where you would like to move to.